I wanted to backtrack a little bit because people are going to get the wrong thought when you say like, I'm a crazy driver. I am an efficient driver and I've never ever gotten into a car wreck. I've scraped a car once while going two miles per hour. I was with you. I know, but I've never actually hit a car. I think you should pull your best friends and ask them what you, what they think about your driving skills. I'm sorry, but all of my best friends have gotten to a car accident and yet I'm the only one. So like That's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> R-O-T-N, let, let me present, present to you. you the Rotten Podcast. The Rotten Podcast. How do you want me to say it? Rotten. Hello, guys. Welcome back. What is freaking up, you guys? There is not a lot up. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm not feeling good. I don't know. I just feel really off. Are you getting sick? I think so. I've been trying to fight it the last couple of days, but I can't like think straight. We can't film a podcast. We're going to have to because that might get worse. <laughs> um, hi, guys. Well, Matt, <laughs> I feel like we should leave that in. That was kind of cute. Um, so Matt is uh, not feeling very well right now, um, but we are going to be troopers and go on through with episode eight because I am very energetic and excited to film this podcast. I could feel a sickness coming on. I think a lot no. of people have been getting sick over the past week, two weeks. So many people are getting COVID again, which is crazy. Yeah. I thought we were done with all that, but it seems like it's something we're just going to have to live with. I know Mia just got COVID, I think last week. Mm. She had a COVID scare and then actually ended up getting COVID like two weeks afterwards. This week has been rough in general, not just you, but literally like my week has been so rough because today is Thursday. I was, I was supposed to come on on Tuesday because my flight back to LA was on Tuesday, except Southwest decides to cancel literally all the flights in the continuous United States for like three days straight. They canceled 7,500 flights. I thought it was more than that now. The last thing I remember, I haven't been updated in a minute, but the last I saw was 7,500. So I'm sure it's way more like 10,000 now. Yeah, they canceled a bunch today too as well. Today? Yeah. And oh I think there might be more cancellations. What is going on with them? Oh my God. So for those of you guys who don't know, this has been a massive mess for Southwest. And I did a bunch of research on this because it affected me. And what happens is that, well, there was that huge blizzard in the Midwest, right? And that affected all the airlines, but it heavily affected Southwest even more than United or American Airlines or Delta because literally Southwest is on a different system. Airlines like American and Delta are on a hub and spoke model versus Southwest is on a point to point model. So that means that they don't actually have a central hub. So their planes go from left to right, up and down, and they never come back to one central area versus like American Airlines. I believe they are based out of um, Atlanta, Georgia. I could be completely wrong, but their planes always come back to Atlanta, Georgia at least once a day versus Southwest. It's like my flight to Sacramento from LA originated in Denver. So even if my flight to LA to Sacramento had no weather issues because Denver had a bunch of weather issues, it was an issue. But the biggest thing, which was the craziest, sorry, I'm like so into this because I did so much research on this because I was like, this is bullshit. I love Southwest, but what is actually going on? So their model, their processing system is on such an old, old archaic, like 1980s system where like a pilot or a crew member has a flight canceled, there is no automated way for them to get reassigned to a different flight. So what they have to do is they call a 1-800 number and someone on the other line goes, okay, your flight was canceled. Let's book you on the next flight from Atlanta, Georgia to let's say Sacramento. But this happens where they cancel flights, maybe like 40 to 50 flights a day. Well, because of the weather system, I think 100 flights got canceled and then that got snowballed to like 1,000. And when 1,000 people are getting canceled, that means that's six members per airplane. That's 6,000 phone calls. And then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse because phone operators can only handle so much because they are only used to like maybe 400 people calling in a day. So that's why they literally lost their crew. They like genuinely don't know where all their crew members are right now. Wow. Yeah. I mean... I've been seeing it all over social media. I started seeing people post like Southwest, <laughs> like going crazy. Yeah. And then I just kept seeing memes and people one after another keep making posts bashing it. Yeah. And they're typically not the airline to get bashed because they've always been 
so loved. So loved for just having good company culture, having really good customer service and doing things a little bit uniquely. And it's crazy to see that there, I think I read that it was what, 85% of all the flights being canceled are Southwest. It's some crazy high number. Yes. Which is insane. The amount of flights canceled from Southwest, I, th- I think I saw it was like 1,500 and the next one underneath that was like 60. Yeah. From one airline to the next. So something major is going on. I mean, the CEO came out and made a public statement. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was 34 years old. So he's actually the newest CEO. He started his job in 2022 and had said that the number one priority on his list, because he saw the effects of Southwest having these major issues over the last decade, he was like, the next thing we're working on is upgrading all of the systems, but he can't do it in one year. He kind of inherited a mess from the last CEO. I mean, my question is, how did they crumble this much when I'm sure storms like this happen from time to time, how are they so unprepared for something like this? Because I know that there was a couple really big storms across the country, mm-hmm. but it's not like these things haven't happened before. Yeah. So how do we explain that? Is there an actual reason as to why this happened? Well, I just explained it. It's because their system for canceled flights is the cabin crew has to call in literally to a 1-800 number, talk to a phone operator, and get reassigned to a different plane. No, I I get that, which is crazy, but yeah. how is it so bad this time? I mean, I feel like this, um, this blizzard was a pretty bad blizzard, so it probably canceled more flights than they expected, but at some point, they literally lost control of where their planes were and where all of their cabin crew was. It was wild. I read some guy was trying to fly from LA to mm-hmm. Denver to see his family and his mom is like 88 and his dad is 90 and it's in his sister is like yeah. hey this is they're not going to be alive much longer you know there's this is probably one of the last opportunities you have to see them yeah and he still hasn't been able to get home for the holidays mm-hmm. and I just can't imagine how many people are in these crazy situations where yes. they needed to see someone they were going to get their kid you know, there, it, this creates such a ripple effect, not to mention all of the luggage that has mm-hmm. been lost. And that is probably the most chaotic part of it mm-hmm. as well. The because, craziest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I was going to say the craziest thing is that you are allowed to fly luggage without the entire full crew and like passengers on the plane. So what was really stupid was that the planes were still moving around with everyone's luggage, but the people were in their actual plane seats. What I don't get is say you need like one flight attendant for every 50 passengers, but if you're missing one, they canceled the entire flight for all the passengers. Why can't you just let 50 less people on the plane so that at least some people are moving throughout the States, but instead they just canceled all the flights, but let all the luggage fly. And I've actually had that happen to me where I was going to Minnesota for the first time. I booked a really great sponsorship by Target. They flew me first class and they put my, I know it was the first time I was ever going to fly first class. I I stood inside the first class line and there was no attendant there for a solid 15 minutes. She had just like, she helped the person in front of me, left her counter and then came back after like a 15 minute break. And I missed the time because your luggage is supposed to be there 45 minutes beforehand i missed it i missed the cutoff so they wouldn't let me on the plane but they let my luggage on the plane the reason why i wasn't allowed on the plane isn't that stupid that's so dumb either way what i was trying to get at is um this entire (laughs) situation sucks i had my flight on tuesday it got canceled monday morning and they didn't even email me or text me my flight was canceled i found out when I had to look at my flight being like, why can't I check in? And then I remember telling you and you're like, I can't wait that long to see you. And I was like, that is the cutest thing you've ever said. Mm-hmm. That was so cute. I was like, okay, I need to Luckily home. you were at home. Yeah. And you don't, didn't have a job that you needed to get back to. I had to get back for the podcast. I felt well, really bad. Well, yeah, but I'm saying you have way more leniency, leniency, flexibility mm-hmm. in your life. You have so much more leniency in your life, but it was still so disruptive. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what other people are going through? I like yeah. that is just insane. I, and when you said your flight was on Tuesday and you said there isn't a flight until Saturday, I'm thinking, how is that even possible? Mm-hmm. I mean, there were flights, but they were twenty five hundred dollars, yeah. two thousand. So this probably put so many people in terrible situations. Can you imagine what yeah. the customer service email supports looking like if you're at Southwest right now? It's Six probably hours. a constant just influx of messages, angry people. I mean, what do you do if you're Southwest? I don't know. Like, how do you actually recover from something like this? Because not only have you 
lost so many customers you also you it's embarrassing. yeah it's a good time to invest in their stock i mean i believe they'll probably I recover already own their stock it's yeah. called luv love but I, too much love going around <laughs> this holiday is the amount of love missed you know by what? people not being able to see their families and have a wonderful christmas i know wow southwest really said you want to get away well, you can't. They are getting people away. They're trapping them in the airport. That's what's happening. Want to get away to the airport? <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a TikTok. I got really sad and even more angry at this was that there was a girl who got married in Austin, Texas during this time right now. And all her friends and family booked Southwest, including Ooh. herself. And she can't even make it to her own wedding right now. She can't. Holy make, yeah. shit. You know, that is so shitty. And this entire situation sucks. Well, you made it back I to did. L.A. I you got came, really lucky. What, a day later? Yes. But you had to drive. I drove. You know what? Normally it would take me five hours to drive this because I, I drive like a little speed demon. It took me Yeah, you're hours. a dangerous. I'm not a dangerous. Yeah, you are. I've you are totally. No, you are totally that asshole in a BMW. When people go to L.A. I drive a Mercedes, and they by the see way. this. Or sorry. You are <laughs> totally that asshole in a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> You're that hot young girl whipping, snapping her her ponytail, honking up people's asses. Move! I'm in the passenger seat and I'm like, sorry, sorry. When <laughs> I think of credit. a typical LA driver, like a little rich, well put together woman in a Mercedes Benz. By the way, it's white and it's a convertible, <laughs> and you're up people's ass and you're whipping and snapping your head. Well, okay, in my defense, I've just grown up in California and I've grown up wanting to get somewhere, right? Because nowhere else in the country is traffic as bad as Los Angeles County or New York City, right? Everyone can say, no, Denver, Colorado gets really bad traffic as well. But guess what? LA County has more population in just Los Angeles County than like 40 states. 40 states. Wow. People don't understand the, the traffic, traffic situation in L.A. because you can totally come to L.A., sit in a minimal amount of traffic and be like, oh, traffic's not that bad. But if you're here for longer than a week or whatever, mm -hmm. you quickly realize there is traffic at the weirdest times for random mm -hmm. shit going on. And there is just so many people legitimately human beings yeah. when I'm driving around and I'm trying to go to the gym or I'm coming home for the gym and I'm like. There are so many humans yes. in my path to get home. It is ridiculous. And no one is in the carpool lane because nobody carpools in LA. Well, that's the worst <laughs> part about it is that everyone is driving yeah. their, themselves. Mm -hmm. It is a very inefficient way of transportation I because know. also the train in the public transportation system out here is absolutely garbage. I've been once and it's so bad. Mia used to take the train with her ex-boyfriend Alex and I remember I took the metro with them once and I was like why don't more people do this because no one does it. Well the difference is with LA there's so many different pockets and areas and it's all pretty spread out yeah. among highways in neighborhoods and stuff so it's not that there are these pockets of areas that everyone is going to it's very spread out yeah it's not that it's necessarily inefficient like i said it's really just the lay of the land because i did take the public transportation system one time and it was actually not bad when i first moved out here i was working all these random jobs and i was living in sherman oaks in the valley at the time and i didn't have a car and so i had a longboard to the bus on mm -hmm. ventura take the bus to um the universal train stop, take that train all the way downtown. It wasn't bad. It was definitely a lot of like back and forth. But that's why no one and, likes to do it. There is no efficient way to get yeah. from point A to point B. There's like a lot of walking involved and then you take the shuttle or the whatever and then you take another one and then another one and then you walk a little bit more and then you're there. Definitely depends where yeah. you're going. If you have to get to Santa Monica, if you have to get to downtown, there are certain places where it is kind of effective, but yeah. majority of it is, you know... Yeah. Most people are going in so many different places. So I don't know how you solve that issue. You don't. Yeah. There well, Elon was trying to build tunnels, tunnels and then he, I think he just gave up on it. And he really, he gave up on a lot of things, I feel like. Yeah. I wanted to backtrack a little bit because people are going to get the wrong thought when you say like, I'm a crazy driver. I am an efficient driver and I've never, ever gotten into a car wreck. I've scraped a car once while going two miles per hour. I was with you. I know. But I've never actually hit a car. I at think like you should pull speed. your best friends and ask them what you what they think about your driving skills. I'm and sorry, then, but all of my best friends have gotten to a car accident, and yet I'm the only one 
one that hasn't. Okay. Because I will say crazy driver, but also super hyper aware of everything going around me. That could be the kryptonite for you is this overly confident, aggressive driver. I'm not even overly confident. I, you know what? You have to be an aggressive. Okay. Okay. In my defense, my uncle is the one who taught me how to drive and he owned a driving school. So my family owned a driving school and he taught- Do you think that you're a better driver than me? In some ways, yes. In some ways I can spot. So like I've taken- Yes. Okay. We're going on a tangent and it's kind of fun. So I've taken an IQ test before. I believe I'm at a 120, which is above Smart average. Ass. No, it's above average. But the thing I'm most highly efficient at is pattern spotting. I don't know how IQ tests work, but there's like different cognitive skills that they um, test on. Pattern, highest scoring thing I had on there. Patterns for what? It's just spotting patterns, like seeing, just being very much an observer, I think. Like observing patterns. And I'll have you take an IQ test so you know what I mean. But I can spot patterns in traffic. I can be like, this lane is going to go so much faster than this lane. And I'll... And I'll, I have to tell myself to shut up when you're driving because I'm like, why are you in this lane? We can get there so much faster. You just moved one lane over. But that's the difference between you and I. When I am trying to get somewhere effectively, I will be doing that. And I feel like mm -hmm. I can also spot where a good moving lane is and look ahead as and, good and as really me, weave. Maybe, maybe not. But you're better Parker than up me. to 90, 80 to 90 percent where the difference probably wouldn't make much yeah. of a difference. Yeah, I think so. But the thing is, I'm not always rushing to get somewhere. I think a lot of the times when you're in the car, you default to just being like, if I'm going to the grocery store, move. And I'm like, well, if we're going Why to the grocery store. Why would I want to wait on anyone's slow ass when I can move a lane and then stop? Because over it's them. a pace. It's a vibe. If you're driving, you got music on, you're just getting out of the house. That's like a time for me where I enjoy that. See, the thing is, I enjoy not even driving fast. I enjoy genuinely weaving through traffic, like spotting those patterns. Danger. It's not even being dangerous because I'm I'm never going like 100 miles per hour doing this. I'm doing it at 80, which is a typical speed, by the way, in L.A. Like, Depends where you're going. Okay, if there's no traffic in L.A., if you're not going 80 to 85, you're going way too slow. I'm sorry. There are four lanes in L.A. The f fast lane, fast lane, somewhat fast lane, regular f speed lane. If you're not going regular speed, get out of the way. And if you're not to the very left going at least 25 miles per hour, a little bit more than, okay, not 25, maybe like 15 to 20 miles per hour above the speed limit, you are not going fast enough and people will be honking their asses on you. So for people who don't live in California, hurry up. But I will say I've gotten a lot less crazy. I've chilled out a lot and I think it's a little bit from like my ADD medication that I've been taking. Like it makes me a lot more like I just don't care as much to get there as fast, I've realized now. Yeah. But to me, like, I love going fast. Remember our second day ever? To me, yeah, like, that was me driving. I know, but. exactly. But that to me is like so fun. Just like good music. And you don't even know you're going fast. Like, I'm very hyper aware when I drive to the point where I don't even know I'm focusing on it. It just comes so naturally to me. So when I have like really good music pumping, which is what I did yesterday for 10 straight hours because I was driving from Sacramento to LA. It just, it's so fun to me. There's like yeah. nothing more it's fun. It's not fun being in the passenger seat because it's yes. not a smooth ride at all. It's like, uh, 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 and I'm like trying to yeah. relax sitting here and I'm, uh, uh, and I'm <laughs> <laughs> getting a little nauseous low key on the side. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It's not a smooth ride. Would you say I'm a bad driver, though? I think you're a good driver, but you don't always need to be driving that way. And I think you increase your chances of putting yourself at a higher risk of getting in an accident. You know, you're increasing your risk by the you way that what? you drive. I don't think you mitigate actually, risk. Okay. So good driver. Yes. Yeah. Safe driver. No. Oh, we're going to talk about safe drivers. Do you want me to start talking about this? Talk about what? I am never on my phone and texting. Ever. You got to say, that is <laughs> one thing I don't do. That's true. That uh, I don't even want to say that you do it because I... I definitely do it. I, I need to be, do a better job. One time we actually had a driver honk at you because he saw you texting and driving. And I'm like, this man. Okay, maybe it wasn't texting and driving. It was probably changing the song, Still. doing something. Yeah. It like makes me anxious being in your car every single time you pick up that phone to change the song as if it's that important. It's not. Okay, I mean... I can't argue with that at all. Yeah. 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 I need to work on that a little bit. Yeah. I'll work on driving a little less weavy and you'd work on. Ask yourself two questions. Wow, this is going to be so hypocritical. <laughs> okay. What are the two questions? <laughs> is my driving ability. Wait. 
the question you got to ask yourself when you're driving is, is this increasing my safety? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely driving and texting is just the worst thing you could do possible. Also, Terrible. being a really slow driver yeah. is uh, actually not safe either. Sorry. Yeah. So follow the... Uh, what is it? The pulse of the city? Either way. You did not just say that. I don't know. Follow but the I was pulse trying of to the say. city. I keep thinking about, I know you don't want to watch Friends, so I don't even want to talk about it, but there's an episode Hot of Friends. take. I don't think Friends is funny at all. <sighs> I will say they're not very woke for Gen Z, but I grew up on that shit and I cried when I was in fifth grade and found out that they were canceling the season. I don't know why I feel like there's this like unspoken sort of you know, you're like, you love the office or you're mm -hmm. like a friends person uh, uh, or is it, always, or is it always sunny in Philadelphia or the office? I feel like is a common sort of this or For that. Me, when I was growing up as either you liked Seinfeld or you liked friends. Mm. I actually didn't know of the office until I was much older and you were like, you well, Seinfeld is such an older show. Yeah. It was like the same generation as like mm, friends, friends versus office came out maybe when friends was pretty much ending yeah yeah but what i was trying to say about friends is that there's an episode on friends and i know you don't give a shit but i'm gonna say it anyways because i mentioned it ross geller and rachel were in the car together and rachel was going over the speed limit and then she got a ticket from the cops and so then they switched seats right because the cop was like you can't drive he needs to drive he drove and he drove under the speed limit and then he got a ticket so like <laughs> <That's pretty funny. laughs> so i was just like you know, might as well just drive fast i don't know why that that humor of like a of like a sitcom rom-com <laughs> where it's just like joey what are you doing and then it's just like ah you know it's like laughing i, I just I don't know. It's definitely a style thing. Yeah. And I have to give it a chance because I'm sure I would actually like the story and stuff mm -hmm. uh, with friends because, you know, it's definitely been a phenomenon. But yeah, I love the office, the I improv, know. just like they had improv in friends as well to a different, different level. But the beautiful thing about friends is it made you realize that, you know, when you're in your 20s, because they were all in their 20s when they started, it was that time in your life where your best friends were your family. Right, because you didn't have family around. Family is such an interesting concept because it it's crazy how it changes as you go through life. Yeah, you know, like you're saying, you go in your twenties and then you value your your friendships a lot yeah. um, because they're the ones that are closer to you and give you that day to day support. Mm -hmm. Usually, when you move away from your family, but now I feel like I'm kind of entering a different phase where so you love your family again. No, I love my family again, but I love this family. What's this family? This is the family that we're going to start. Like yeah. it's the priority over everything because yeah. yes, friends obviously, but you know, friends come and go. I feel like a good gauge for a friend is like, would they pick you up from the airport? A good gauge of a friend in LA is would they drive to you? True. Yeah. And then also, what? would you pick, would you pick up, <laughs> would you pick me up from the airport? Okay. I feel I like that's not Lauren, a thing. But I wouldn't go pick, even though I live 15, yeah. 20 minutes. I guess that's true. Trip. I guess that's true. Cause it's LA and it's, it's like. LA. You can't expect someone to do that. At this point now, it's like, you I didn't even Uber? take my family to the airport the other day. <laughs> you didn't? Well, they it was Ubered? in the morning and I was planning on picking you up, but mm. then your flight got canceled. So I'm like, I'm not going back twice. Yeah. So yeah, Ubering is sometimes just the easiest thing to well, do. Well, now that there's Uber involved, it's like, bitch, just take the $20 Uber. Bitch. 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 <laughs> but no, it's so interesting that you say that about family because when I was younger, I liked my family, but the second I went to college, I was like, I don't miss my family at all. All my mm -hmm. best friends in my sorority were my best friends, were my family, it felt like. And then after I graduated, it was still all my best friends. But I've actually come to an age where I actually genuinely miss my family again, which is why we, f we spent our first Christmas not together this year, because my grandma, she had a heart attack. And my grandma is probably the closest thing I have in my life, minus like my immediate family that I just love and would be genuinely devastated if something was to ever happen to her. So when I found out about the heart attack, I was like, I really need to go home. Because if you think about it, if you only go home once a year, right? And your grandma is, both of their grandmas are in our 80s. Yeah. Realistically, they're going to only live until they're, they're 95, hopefully. So you only have 10 to 15 more chances to see them. I know, it's crazy. So if you think about it in chances... How many times are you going to see this person ever again? And I only spent four hours with her this trip. 
Yeah. I'm only going to have maybe a hundred more hours with her in my entire life. And that genuinely makes me so sad. So I was like, I need to go home. Yeah. That's how I feel about my grandma too. Yeah. Even with the, even with the wedding and stuff, you know, she's like, when are they getting, you know, when are they getting married? I know. And she's going to be a good She also worries about that as well. Like, will I be able to even make it out there? You know what? Well, she's in great health, she but is. still, you know, it's something that you have to think about. Mm-hmm. That just brings up the whole discussion around family yeah. and friends, because, you know, even for Christmas, for example, that was a big topic of debate in conversation because my sister and her fiance flew out and stayed with us. Mm-hmm. And my mom also came out and stayed with my younger sister. So we had all of the siblings together together for Christmas, which doesn't happen often. So we were definitely cherishing it and talking about it because, you know, we go through different stages of what family and friends are. And we were talking about when, when's the next time all of us will be together for Christmas. Mm -hmm. My sister is going to have kids. I'm sure in a few years, they're going to be stationed in Chicago. They're not going to be traveling with their kids. They're going to be starting their own traditions. Their own family starts to come together. We're going to be starting a family. So it's so crazy to think about that eventually these traditions sort of break down. You know, we're all, me growing up, we were all used to going to our grandma's house, Mm -hmm. but eventually everyone has their own family and that breaks off, which is a weird thing, Mm -hmm. but it's also a beautiful thing. And I was talking to my dad who just moved to Naples. He actually moved to Naples, Florida four days before the hurricane hit, which could be iconically one of the worst times to move he is all the way on the east coast in florida we're all the way here in california there's still some family back in chicago but i was talking to him on christmas day i'm like how you doing he's like you know i'm a little sad i'm not used to this you guys are so far away you know it's the first christmas he was having without his mom who passed my grandma this year so that was really sad for him and yeah and i was just talking to him and i'm like You know, it's definitely weird. I remember the first Christmas when you and I decided to stay here. I think it was due to COVID. Yeah. And, um, you know, we did it with my siblings and we just had a thing at the house and it was weird at first, but it ended up being so relaxing and nice that we're, we want to do it every year, you know, when you don't have to travel and do that. And there is something beautiful and exciting about building new traditions. Yeah. You know, so that's what I was kind of telling him. I'm like, Hey, enjoy it. Try to find something fun to do that you can remember and do again next year and you're going to just build off of it. Oh, not <clears throat> you being your dad's like confidant. Well, I think it's weird when you move out and, you know, for him, he moved out this year and he's yeah. been living in Chicago his entire life, you know, for 60 years. He moved out a little bit in Arizona for college, but aside from a year or two or whatever, he's lived his whole life in Chicago. So that's got to be crazy moving somewhere new for the first time. So exciting. Yeah. But definitely there's all that new stuff that comes with it. Yeah. I was actually just thinking this because both of us are closer with our mom's side of the family than our dad's side of the family, right? I just realized your family is going to be dad's side of the family when we have kids. Our kids will be less oh. close to your side of the family than mine. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again? Our kids will be like, dad's side of the family i want to hang out with mom's side of the family because i feel like almost everyone across the board loves their mom's side. let's be honest here do you like your dad's side of the family more than your mom's side my dad's side of the family they're sadly all gone i know but think about it and they think never had kids exes. there was no other cousins and stuff think about like your that exes. were they close to their dad's side or the mom's side i'd say both really yeah i don't think it's like some well, I feel Mom's like the majority. Side always wins. No, it doesn't That's a always hot win. But I feel like for the majority. <laughs> That's a hot I take. Saying, I think you're out of pocket with that one. Well, you also feel like you're more Italian, which is on your mom's side. Yeah, but that's because my great. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that it's it's safe to say. I'm not that. saying it's a hundred percent, but I'm just saying you have. I'm sorry, but you're you have like a lower chance than being the favorite than my side because I am mo- like mom's side, right? Like, well, you- we'll see how <laughs> lit mom's side is when it comes down the stretch because that's pretty much like what okay, my now, siblings yes, do with their families now, and kids, and you know we're we're pretty turned up. So okay, now think about Andrew because you're gonna be on the dad's side of Andrew's kids. Mm-hmm. right so his kids are probably going to be closer to Kaylee's side versus like Jennifer and Jessica you'll be on the mom's side so you'll be like the cool uncle what if what if it turns out that like you just aren't that close to Andrew's kids like that's so sad to think about but that's not possible I don't see it happening because I think it all starts from the relationship you have with that 
person. person. And I think that my siblings were super close. You know, you think they're going to be close forever when you don't even want to stay in L.A. forever. I mean, who knows? We'll see. But if we're still around California yeah. and Andrew's still around California, I guarantee among any of the kids, we'll probably spend the most time like dad side because Andrew and I are so yeah. close that we're going to be doing everything together. We're going to be like coordinating. and It'll be like you and Kaylee if they if they ever make it that far. And that's also so. what we were talking about. We're like, I could totally see that in yeah. the future because Jennifer will probably go off and find a man. And it'll just be like we're here and if he stays here yeah. you know i could see that being the the trajectory which I, that would be that would be ideal i would love that because i love your family and i would of course want our kids to be as close to your side of the family i feel like my family would probably be further out because no one's yeah. in la but they are in california so it's like not that far away but mm -hmm. I don't know, just going home made me realize how much I used to not care for my family and how much I care about it now as mm -hmm. I've gotten older. And I remember just being like really jealous of like the relationship my friends would have with their family. And I feel like I'm finally getting that for myself for the first time in like Aww, a decade. Yeah. Where I genuinely like to hang out with them. Like I used to not care for my cousins, but when I was home and for Christmas, I was like, oh, my cousins are actually pretty fucking cool. Like Two of them are going to be cops. One of them is pre-med. And I was like, wow, they're actually doing cool shit. Like, I've just been so out of their lives. I had no idea what was actually going on behind the scenes. I definitely want to start visiting home more. And especially with my grandma being yeah. getting older, I definitely want us to, like, maybe come up to Sacramento, like, once or twice a year. Not during the holidays, because I mm -hmm. love the holidays in, like, L.A. I really missed you during Christmas this year. But, like, just, like, randomly. So you say. Yeah, so I say. Um... I don't really know how much missing happened when I loved hanging out with my family, but wow. I definitely, did you miss me that much while you're with your family? <laughs> no, the I didn't miss you at all. The dirtiest look. And I'm kidding. Didn't miss you at all. <laughs> Matt is giving me the dirtiest look ever. I mean, my family was here. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't wait for them to leave, but I love them. But, you know, there comes a time where there's a certain time limit. You know, you want to just go back to your routine mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. I think it's because you're hosting. I'm sure Tree, because I was staying at my sister's house, she was probably like, yeah, go home. And it's actually funny because when my flight got canceled for four days, she was like, oh, take my car, go, leave yeah, now. Yeah, literally. Bye. But her husband, Steve, was like, oh my God, I'm so excited for you to stay longer because that means we get to eat McCoonies, which is steve's favorite restaurant because tree doesn't like sushi so like he was like i'm excited for you to stay longer because then i get to eat really good food versus like when it's just the two of them she doesn't want to go out to eat at mm -hmm. any of the spots he wants to go to so it was like funny when she was like mm, you can figure out a way home <laughs> yeah also i didn't want to be there that long i genuinely missed our dogs and you but i really really feel like i missed out on like five days of theo's growth because mm -hmm. when i left he was big when I came home, he's bigger. Well, you came home and he was bigger and he's a better boy than he was when you he's left. So much a, he's such a good boy. And then Zoe, I swear, gets tinier the second. She gets worse and tinier. <laughs> he gets, gets bigger and better. She what? gets worse That's and so tinier. That's so mean. That's how you, you know, know it's how true. you feel. Not even. She's it's because when she's alone with you, dad just doesn't know how to take care of her like That's mom not does. true. She tried to I bite you the other night. Baby. What? She tried to bite me because Theo was annoying the shit out of her and she thought I was Theo for a hot second. Mm -hmm. You know how like dogs just like snap at other dogs to like correct them? Oh, she, she knew doesn't. it was you. She just wasn't having it. Yeah, she just was not having it that day. Um, Anyways. Versus Theo was eating my f underwear. He's so silly. He's so gross. You know the thing I learned about him? What? Is he just doesn't have a bad bone in his body. He's yeah, but he's so a slick innocent. guy. He's, he's, slick. he's a slick guy. That's hilarious. He's slick. He'll like pretend when, when he's playing with Zoe, he'll pretend he's like nonchalant and doesn't give a shit. And then out of nowhere, he just goes from zero to a hundred to like yeah. psych her out. Yeah. And then he plays dumb and yeah, it's funny. So he's smart um, too in his own little way. It's funny because like you're saying how your definition of family has changed. Now it's become our kids are like our little dogs. And this was what makes me really sad. And I kind of want to bring it up really, really quick is Kim Kardashian does not take care of her dogs very well for a billionaire because her daughter Northwest has TikToks. To and your I'm guessing side of the family she accidentally posted a video. With you sent me this, yeah. I did. So you did see the video of Northwest. Yeah, pretty f Did you up. see the full video or just that video? I saw the video you sent me of the person being mm. like, I work at a shelter and let me tell you, this behavior is not yes. ideal. 
So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, Northwest actually posted a video of her doing chores, I'm guessing, because she was feeding the dogs, changing their water, changing their pee pads or whatever to like two Pomeranians. And these Pomeranians are literally situated in a garage on concrete with pee pads all over the floor. And it looks really clean, but it's just not how you treat Pomeranians. Like yeah. Maybe a husky that's like an outside dog, maybe during a winter you bring him into the garage garage but literally pomeranians that are like literally purse dogs that you stick in your purse and you like have with you 24 well, 7 i think the part that you're missing is northwest posted it and then her mom goes uh-oh and, and deletes it, it immediately literally um because she minutes. knew that that wasn't the best look and to be fair we don't know if those are the normal arrangements for the dogs right that could have just been during the holidays you know if you have people over like my grandma will put the dogs in the garage in a little like crate because you know move them away from the party it's like we do that also with zoe and stuff we'll like put them in a crate. crate the point that i'm making is that it could have just been a situational thing where they had people over and they're putting the dogs in the garage yeah. and this is not your typical garage either by the way okay but i actually genuinely don't think that she actually has them inside the house and you're right i because i don't either if we're commenting on it i don't think so have you seen her architectural digest or like vogue um 73 questions interview no. like her house is spotless there's no color involved and i highly doubt she has her little dogs running around her spotless ass house yeah who knows i think all the kardashians are actually pretty bad with their dogs it's actually like a thing on tiktok being like where are the dogs because kylie jenner has her greyhounds and kendall jenner has her dobermans but no one ever sees them taking photos with them posting them or even them being filmed with the dogs during their show yeah. So it's just like, where the f are these dogs? Got to take care of the dogs. It's a full-time job. <sighs> Honestly, the jump from one dog to two dogs, it the responsibility has increased like tenfold. It's not as easy as, oh, like maybe it's like a little bit more work. It's like a lot more work to having two dogs. Well, because also one's a puppy. The amount of work now is not the amount of work that will be in a year with the dogs plus we're going we're putting them in good training and we're gonna we're spending time doing that so i'm excited really for miles shape. to get them i know miles is matt's friend good friend who is now a dog whisperer so he trains celebrity dogs in la um really good ones and literally charges an insane amount to have your dogs housed with him for 30 days but straight. if you think about it like from his perspective it is a lot of money but if you think about what he actually has to do, he has to take them on walks. He has to feed them. He can't just go, you know, his whole life is now revolved around, revolved around these dogs. And it's a lot of money, but it's also, you know, your time. You know, we, t we take care of two dogs and it's a lot of work. Imagine yeah. taking care of someone else's dogs and training them and feeding them, you know, and housing them in a new environment. So it makes sense. I know it is definitely a lot of work that Miles is but doing. But I think what it's made me realize too is that it's definitely worth it to invest in your dogs, you know, and the principles that he was telling us when he did his consultation was pr primarily the fundamental is that dogs will instinctually lead on their own because they're pack animals. And if you don't give them a job or if you don't train them to understand that, hey, you're not the pack leader, you don't need to make decisions they will instinctually find jobs to do for themselves, whether it be barking at the neighbors or the mailman or, you know, trying to trying to run around the house and do the things you don't want them to do. They're doing that because they don't have structure and they don't have a job to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really like reprogramming them to learn like, hey, you're the pack leader. I need I can take the back seat. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he what his job is doing is like so important. And I'm excited to see little Zoe and Theo get trained in a better environment because right now we are doing a okay job. Not great. Just an okay job. Yeah, I would say in the past week, two weeks, since I've been more free with my time, I've been spending way more time training them. And I think they're getting a lot better. But for the past two months, it was there was no time to really... I know we really got you at the <laughs> worst possible time, but also the best time. He was my little shining no remember beam that. of light. So remember that two weeks before we got him, we were doing like the best we had ever done. Just like we were so happy, it felt like the honeymoon phase. And I remember you were like, "I'm so happy. This is so great. Like, let's get another dog." And I was like, "Fuck." Well, it wasn't that simple. I mean, but do you remember that week before yeah. we got Theo? We were like the like best we had been in like a, a hot minute. Yeah. And now we've been struggle boating. 
Yeah. <laughs> but not because of the dogs. But yeah, I will say I am very excited to get the dogs trained because there's nothing worse than a bad trained dog. Yeah. Especially when you're taking them out in social settings and stuff like that, or you see someone else's dog and they're like not behaved like... You know, it's like, take care of your dog. Get your shit together here. I think we should definitely talk about the Logan Paul situation because it is hot news right now. So this podcast is going to come out on the same day that he's allegedly going to be addressing the claims that he scammed people with an NFT project. If you guys don't know about Logan Paul... I'm sure you guys do. Logan Paul is like one of the biggest YouTubers on YouTube. One of the biggest influencers of our time has really, really gotten himself to a place where he is pretty much a celebrity now. He's not like an influencer. He's known as a celebrity. And I was really rooting for Logan Paul until I watched this this video that came out by CoffeeZilla. So CoffeeZilla is a YouTuber as well in his own right, who is also an investigator. And he does this incredible investigations of scams or projects or of just anything like anything you can think of he investigates and he did a very thorough investigation of logan paul and into his nft project called crypto zoo and the funniest thing is i remember when logan paul had announced this i was so project. excited for it both and, of us and i will say what, what, what's the guy's name coffee zilla coffee zilla wow that was the first time i ever watched his videos this guy is like this guy is a legitimate journalist mm -hmm. investigating stories calling witnesses the production yeah. value is incredible so shout out to him for putting that together i was so fascinated with yes. how well documented it was and he had been working on this story for a year and it just came out but the crypto zoo thing we were so excited about it because i remember hearing him talk about how he's launching this project he's so excited about it it's going to change nfts it's for kids it's this interactive game and he kept talking about it. And so we were both really excited to get involved or at least try to get one. I literally tried to buy $500 worth of their coin. And I called Jeremy. I'm like, hey, I need $500 worth of Binance. My bank wouldn't let me connect to Binance. And I know that his did. But I ended up not going through with it, luckily. But I would have been out a bunch of money if I invested in Logan Paul's project. And mm -hmm. we were so excited about crypto zoo because he was saying it was going to be this game for kids that you can make money by investing in yeah so pretty much the scam is that logan paul started an nft project with his founders um, one of them being a manager the other being crypto king and then the other being this man named ivaness who ended up being a huge liar so ivan s is the lead developer of crypto zoo the game that logan paul wanted to start as an nft project but the only thing with ivan s is he has literally no experience being a lead developer of anything he lied that he went to mit he lied that he worked for the cia and he lied that he said he won a super bowl like yeah what? he said that he worked for the philadelphia eagles i believe yeah all of which was all untrue. Not, which was not true. That's why this story is so crazy because not only did Logan Paul tell people they can make money playing a game, their team had someone with a fraudulent background who legitimately tricked them, mm -hmm. which is so wild. This guy was saying the most outrageous shit and they never backed it up. And here he is as an investor. The bottom line with this project is that right now, there still is no game. Yeah. He Logan Paul slowly backed away from it, hasn't mm -hmm. said anything about it. People have lost $500,000. That's just $25,000, right? If you're putting your that much money in, then you're taking a risk. Yeah. But there needs to be some form of accountability when people are going out there and they're saying I'm making a game where you can earn money. Mm -hmm. And then the game never even launches after they've already put money into it. You know, if I'm a consumer and I invested into Crypto Zoo, I'm expecting and waiting, waiting for the game to drop. I'm expecting the marketing that they were promising and they never did any of those things. So all these people put money into a project that eventually became worth nothing because nothing was done with it. And this is something we've seen time and time again with NFT projects. And it's terrible that it's happening with Logan Paul. Yeah, so to like even add more context to the story, because I feel like we're missing out on a bunch of giant details that people should probably know about. So Logan Paul said publicly that he spent like a million dollars on this game. And he's talked about it and he's talked about it. And Ivan S is also another founder that he gave the money to, supposedly. Well, it turns out Ivan S behind their back 
hired a different development team, right? That had nothing to do with CryptoZoo. He hired this developing team and at the end of the day, never paid them their money. So what they did was this development team that never got paid, they took all their code, they took all of the the information that they had produced and they said, we're gonna hold this hostage until you guys pay us because they had never been paid. And on top of just never paying his developing team because of Ivan S supposedly, the craziest thing I think that actually happened was their insider trading. They were pretty much doing things that are very illegal to do in the stock market, but with these crypto coins. Well, if you think about it, it's just like any stock, right? You know that something is gonna go public, so you invest invest in money and you can share that information with people who buy it and it's very gray area it's definitely illegal but there are ways around it which i think that they actually did so they soft launched the the token yeah meaning people can buy it but you wouldn't know that it's out there unless you for whatever reason the stumbled yeah stumbled upon it yeah i think okay so the the thing you're probably like okay a lot of stocks do this right like their founders own the tokens or their founders own the stocks the only thing is that that's publicly disclosed logan paul did not publicly disclose that he owned like this portion of the shares or the coins right they said 25 percent was going to the founders and the team but there was actually more than that that they actually actually had owned previously. So everything was very gray area, something that they were trying to get the SEC not involved in because if they were doing a presale the correct way, they would have gotten the SEC involved, which is why they purposely like did not get the SEC involved and had a pre-launch to their token. Yeah. And I think overall, the biggest issue with this whole situation is People put money in Mm -hmm. expecting there to be a game. That's the problem with NFTs is that people are betting on the team to deliver the things that are being promised, right? So if Logan Paul goes out and says, Crypto Zoo is coming out, it's going to be massive. Everyone's going to be playing this. I'm excited for kids more than anything to get on this. Investors are going, wow, Logan Paul's huge. He's a huge influencer. He's yeah. credible in this space. I'm going to invest a bunch of money. It's the same exact reason I was interested in getting involved. We all tried to get the crypto zoo eggs, me, you, yeah. and Lauren, I believe. Yeah. It didn't work out. Something was super glitching on their website. It, when it was coming time to actually mint, we actually couldn't get them because it was like not so working. Bad. It was so bad and not working. And so people invest tons of money buying the coin, buying the NFT, expecting this to pop. Yes, they expected it to pop, but they were promised that there would be a game. There is no game still. (laughs) If you bought your NFT and you were you wanted to play, there's nothing to play with. So that's the problem is that. At the end of it, people invested in a product that doesn't work. And a lot of people have lost a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And the problem I have with the Logan Paul situation, and I really like Logan, so I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and see where this goes, see what his statement is. I do think it's a little shitty that he has to be called out in order to come forward with this because I even over time forgot. I'm like, oh, whatever happened to Crypto Zoo? Like he's he's just legitimately slowly Mm -hmm. backed away from it. Yeah. And then launched another project, 99 Originals right after um well i think actually i remember being so fascinated by 99 originals because he did such a great job with that nft project but when he was doing that i was like wait what about crypto zoo and i remember for like a whole ass month after crypto zoo launch they still had not opened the eggs like you couldn't see what you actually got yeah and I think it was longer than a month. And I was like, what is going on with this project? He never talks about it. I remember even going on his Twitter. And then because you can search what people have tweeted about. I remember searching CryptoZoo and he hadn't talked about it for like seven weeks or something at mm-hmm. the time. And I was like, does he not actually, is he not the founder of this project? I'm yeah. so confused. I mean, he did a good job backing away from it because I thought, wait, was he actually not involved in this? Yeah. You I know, was like, like oh, maybe genuinely he was just paid as an influencer, but to find out he actually owned 51%. No, it was his idea. He was so excited about it. There's the impulsive company, clips. Yeah. There's clips all over the internet of him talking about this, talking about how kids are going to be able to play games. People are going to be able to make money, none of which happened. And I think that something that we've seen in the NFT space is the worst thing you can do is not say anything. And I just don't understand why he didn't come out and say, Hey guys, this is the situation. This is what we're working on. Yeah. This is what happened. This is what we're going to do. Knowing that people 
put so much money into this, knowing there's people commenting even now on the on his stuff, being like, hey, whatever happened to CryptoZoo? I'm out money, da, da, da. You need to, at a certain point, make a public statement and let people know what's going on. You can't sweep it under the rug and expect people to just forget about it, especially when they've invested their own hard-earned money. So I'm very curious to see, which will be today when this comes out, what is sort of the follow-up. I guess he actually invited CoffeeZilla onto Impulsive to talk about it. So I wonder if that's what's dropping. It probably is what's going to be dropping. I heard they're actually going to try to live stream it and you pay for it so that all the money goes back to the people that have lost their money. But I don't know if they're actually doing that or not. Oh, that would be but a that pretty was good like, idea. That was something they were going to talk about. And I was like, actually, that's like, and it was CoffeeZilla's idea. And I was like, he seems like such a great guy. And I, this is my first time figuring out his stuff either. I've seen his stuff here and there, but didn't really know the name. Uh, what I can't understand is if you're Logan Paul and you make a bunch of money, which, you know, Huge in WWE now. He fought, he fought Floyd Mayweather. He clearly does very well. I'm sure the money that he made from this project is something that he doesn't need. And I know that it's easier to say, but why do, why can't they just give the money back from what was raised? You know? Well, if I you're Logan Paul, I why think, would you not do that? I well, guess okay, is my question. So he owns 51% of the company because that's what they talked about. Or mm-hmm. at least that's what CoffeeZilla did. But I don't think he still has that money. Well, yeah, he probably, he probably got scammed out of it as well from it sounds like this developer and the other people that are a part of it, which were super shady. So that's probably where it's shitty. But at the end of the day, your reputation, especially no one has more to lose than Logan Paul. These people, nobody even knows who they are to begin with. So, yeah. you know, at a certain point, it's like, you know, you got to do what's right or suffer the consequences. And I hope there aren't, you know, but I hope that the people who lost money either get compensated where they get to actually play the game and hopefully make money or they get their money back or something else, you know? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that he probably doesn't have the money to pay everyone because it, it's not like he pocketed every single transaction. People that bought $500,000 in zoo coin, right. And lost a bunch of money on it. Technically, like I hate to say this, but like don't play with money you don't have. Yeah. And so I don't think he's fully, re- he's responsible for maybe the NFT side, but not so much people just like throwing dumb money, hoping it would 10 X because I'm sorry if you ever think that's going to happen, quick money's coming your way. That's yeah. the fastest way to lose your money. There is an interesting gray area there where hundred percent only invest money you're willing to lose. But if you're investing money into a company or a coin or an NFT project that's claiming they're going to do something that they just don't do, That is another discussion, you know, if you lose money on something that that has nothing to do with the NFT side, they never said that crypto zoo is going to give you more money back. It was like, if you had the NFT crypto zoo, then yes, but the actual zoo tokens, like you're probably not going to get your money back. Mm -hmm. There are no promises to buying Bitcoin or Ethereum. Oh yeah. Yeah. With the coin itself. But also the coin was supposed to be something that you could actually use for their ecosystem. So if you can't use it for their ecosystem to play, then yeah. technically you're buying something that doesn't even work again. That's yeah. where, that's <laughs> where it's not just losing money. You invested in something that ended up losing money. You invested in something that you were promised that was going to work. That just doesn't work. The craziest thing I remember is I don't know why I wanted them so bad. Maybe just because Logan Paul's name was attached to it, but their art was shit. I remember being like, this yeah. is the art they hand drew and like spent a bunch of money on. I'm well, it wasn't so hand drawn. Con- they showed in the documentary, like some of the actual images were from. Well, no, that's what he said, though. Logan Paul had said in. Again, oh, we the spent like months on the art yeah, and like, stuff like so that. And then they found involved. what's the site? Oh, Shutterstock. Some yeah. of the images of the animals were Shutterstock. And then they were these goofy combinations of animals mixed together. And they didn't look that great. But, you know, I think they were trying to do something cool and innovative. And I think that's why I was excited because, mm-hmm. you know, with his reputation, I thought, you know, he's, if he's going to put his name behind something, something like this wouldn't happen. And it's crazy <laughs> that it happened, Yeah, you know, but at the time when they were doing it, no one was making, you know, these innovative games around NFTs. I mean, there were, but nothing promising in my opinion. So mm-hmm. that's the lay of the land for the, you know, more crypto NFT crap, just, going down the gutter yeah that's why i feel like influencers in the space have it rough because of the bad actors in the space now including logan paul right that have just really 
fucked us all over. Yeah. And like me owning my own NFT project, I'm just like, I that's the reason why we didn't overpromise anything that we're gonna do. Yeah, we already have the funds to fund everything that we're planning on doing and yeah, you know, um, that was a big reason why we started this project and it's crazy to see at the highest level someone who is supposed to be credible in this space is doing something incredibly fishy. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's a fishy situation, regardless of what side you are on. If you think that Logan Paul is a scam artist or not, it's just a bad look. It's weird. It leaves a weird odor in the room. And uh, I hope it gets taken care of. I think it's a really bad look because he is the majority owner. It's not like he owns like 49%. He owns 51. Yeah. I mean, I remember, like I've said, I remember him being so excited about this, pushing it and saying, it's going to be groundbreaking. I'm so excited. I've poured all my energy Mm -hmm. into something that's going to change NFTs. Um, So it wasn't just something he was associated with. It was something he developed and was pushing. Well, I think Logan Paul is a great way to end today's episode of the Rotten Podcast. Normally we would have a rotten egg um segment but i just got the google form up publicly and so i'm still waiting for responses and i haven't had time to look through them because yesterday was a complete mess for me but guys go submit some rotten egg stories matt and i would absolutely love to hear them and maybe get so if you don't know what the rotten egg story submission is we want to read a story submitted by people every episode and we're going to read it aloud and we're going to discuss if we think that person is a rotten egg or not Mm -hmm. based on their behavior or whatever they are, you know, they want to share that could be juicy or, you know, a little edgy and controversial. So we want to hear from you. We want to build with you guys. You know, we, we love doing this and, um, yeah, we can't wait to keep interacting and find ways to talk with the audience. I will say, um, I think for this episode of the podcast, Logan Paul is the rotten egg. Rotten egg <laughs> has been given to Logan Paul yes. because his crypto zoo eggs don't even work. Exactly. That's yeah. actually hilarious. Right? But yeah, with that being said, make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe if you guys are new. If you guys are listening to Apple or Spotify, give us those five stars, baby. Let's go. Yes. And if you guys have made it to the end of this podcast, comment down below. What your New Year's resolution is because it will officially be 2023 when this podcast is Mm -hmm. out in the world and i just personally am so excited for this year there's so many opportunities let's go let's go